Good morning, everyone. Nice to see you all again. Um, only one announcement this morning, and that is just to remind the board and the Kirk session that there is a Zoom meeting a week on Tuesday at 7.30, and I will send out the passcode by email this week, so if you check your emails. And, of course, this morning is harvest, so I hope that you have a blessed morning today. Thank you. Thank you, Muriel. Good morning to you all. It's somewhat dreary, isn't it? It's a dreary morning, but let's worship God. Give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. Make known among the nations what he has done. Sing to him. Sing praise to him. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Our opening praise is the well-known and popular harvest hymn. We plough the fields and scatter the good seed on the land. The order of our service today is slightly different from normal, and we have two scripture lessons today, both of which will be read for us by Jackie. So I invite you, Jackie, to come and read the first scripture lesson for us. The two scripture readings today. The first one is from Genesis 18 to 22, or 13 to 22. We pick up the scripture lesson from uh, Noah's Jonah's, um, sorry, Noah's travel on the, the ark, and this is him uh, reaching the end of his journey. By the first day or the first month of Noah's 601st year, 
the water had dried up from the earth. Noah then removed the covering from the ark and saw that the surface of the ground was dry. By the 27th day of the second month, the earth was completely dry. Then God said to Noah, Come out of the ark, you and your wife, and your sons and their wives. Bring out every, every kind of living creature that is with you, the birds, the animals, and all the creature, creatures that move along the ground, so they can multiply on the earth and be fruitful and increase in number on it. So Noah came out together with his sons and his wives and his sons' wives, all the animals and all the creatures that move along the ground, and all the birds, everything that moves on the land, came out of the ark one kind after the other. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord and said, taking some of the clean animals and clean birds, he sacrificed burnt offerings on it. The Lord smelled in pleasing aroma and said in his heart, never again will I curse the ground because of humans, even though every inclination of the human heart is evil from childhood. And never again will I destroy all living creatures as I have done. As long as the earth endures, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night, will never cease. Amen. The first reading. Thank you, Jackie. Today's service is one of the annual events in our church calendar. Indeed, this year, it is the first of three consecutive Sundays on which each of which we will mark an annual event. Today we mark the harvest of the land and sea and give thanks to God for his goodness to us. Next Sunday, being the 1st of November, we will mark All Saints Day and the following week will be Remembrance Sunday. Of necessity, our harvest service this year is different. It's very different from the way in which we would normally celebrate it. Firstly, this service is being held a few weeks later than would normally be the case, but that's just due to current circumstances. Normally, visually at the front of the church here, we would have a beautifully and skillfully arranged harvest display of various kinds of produce, which would later go to support people in our town who are in need of food. We are obviously fewer in numbers than we would normally be at this service, as understandably some people of all ages are unable to be with us, and we do miss them. And it's fair to say, I think, that particularly we miss having the children with us. We miss their participation in the service as they carry in the harvest gifts and as they engage in sharing their thoughts with us. The tradition of Harvest Thanksgiving services taking place during September, or very close to it, dates back a very long way and to a very different kind of society and life. In earlier times, harvest was mainly about local provision to meet local need, and it was very much about seasonality. All the produce in a harvest display would have been grown locally, brought to the local church in Thanksgiving, and later distributed in that same community. The cropping process followed each year was that the ground was prepared and crops were planted in the springtime. They grew during the later spring and summer through into the autumn when they were harvested and stored away to make provision for the winter and the months to come until the end, until the next harvest. And to some extent, that continues to be the case but have we ever thought about how some of our food, which sustains us, is actually harvested daily or through other or longer periods of the, earth, of the year than only the season of autumn? Usually around mid-May, the first of the year's crop of grass is harvested 
and they store the silage to feed livestock during the winter months. And on many farms, dependent on weather and on growth, the harvesting of grass continues with a further two or three crops being taken across the months up to September or even early October. Cows. And now to cater for specialist markets to some extent, some sheep and goats are milked two or three times daily, harvesting their crop of milk each day. The meat of some animals bred and reared for meat production is harvested throughout the year. Our supermarkets continually offer us products which can't be sown in our soils or or climate, or alternatively they they are out of season for our climate. But these products have been the harvest of different places and different peoples across the world. Although there are some restrictions on the fishing industry due to due in part to marine conservation, the harvest of the seas is available to us throughout the year. And let's never forget that there is a daily harvest of the water from the hills, a harvest which pours out to us through our taps. We think of seed time and harvest as being at opposite times of the year, seed time in the spring and harvest in the autumn. That is partly but not entirely the case, as the ground is prepared and the seed for a large percentage of the nation's grain crops is now sown almost, or very soon, after the grain crop has been harvested. What I have described to you does not happen across the whole world. It is what happens in the developed and the largely affluent world. What happens in other parts of the world is so very, very different such as in places where farming is on a subsistence basis, and people have to live on a very basic and restricted diet which has very little variety. Places where experience extend, sorry, places which experience extended periods of drought, sometimes being without rain through more than one year. And harvests are different in places where work is hard and manual, And the source of power is not from expensive, technically sophisticated machinery, but is from the strength of animals, partnered and guided by people. The cycles of time and of the seasons do not end. They revolve continuously and they always will. Preparation of the ground to receive and nourish the seeds, sowing and planting, growing and tending, harvesting and storing. And of that we can be sure, because we have the promise of God, which we read in the excerpt of the story of Noah. God's promise that as long as the earth endures, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night, will never cease. And for that promise, and for the harvest of the land and the sea, We offer to God our thanks. Let us pray. God of blessing, we come together this day to celebrate your great goodness and to praise and thank you for your many blessings. As we give thought to the richness and the bounty of the harvest, we gladly acknowledge your faithfulness as day by day you provide for us and bless us beyond our deserving. Thank you, God, for every evidence of your awesome creating and sustaining power, as we are blessed to see and recognize it in the changing beauty of the seasons, in the constant cycle of day and night, in the miracle of new life and growth. Thank you, God, for the rich variety of food which nourishes our bodies, food grown and produced locally, food from different places and cultures across our world, food which is the produce of both land and sea, ready-made food in forms which we now take for granted, but all of which have been developed and made through the dedication, the skill and the labour of others. And we thank you too, Lord, for water and for the variety of ways in which we consume it to refresh our bodies. As we thank you, Father, for our food and for what we drink, we thank you too, For all the people who are involved in ensuring that food reaches us 
fresh and wholesome. Scientists and researchers, farmers, growers and fishermen, pickers and packers, sailors and drivers who transport it, people who work in retail. And we pray for your blessing on each person that they can work in safety and that they may know that their skill, their work and their effort are recognised and valued. Heavenly Father, you told Noah that you would give him and succeeding generations responsibility for every living creature, birds, animals, fish and plants. Thank you too, Lord, for that great responsibility with which you entrust us. And where it sits lightly in human concern, forgive us and help us to honour you by fulfilling that trust. As we give thanks, Lord, for the variety of food and the plenty which we enjoy, we remember that there are so many people in different places of the world who do not have what we carelessly consider to be ours by right. People whose daily food consists of little more than a meagre measure of rice. People whose drinking water is less than pure. People who work to provide food which is not for them, but is destined for markets in which there is over-provision and waste. People who do not have access to well-stocked supermarkets. As we seek your forgiveness for ourselves and for the shortcomings of the systems which cause it inequalities in our world. We remember and thank you too that you have also given us responsibility to be concerned for the good of others and to support them as you have graciously blessed us. And so we pray for people whom we do not know, people who live in impoverished lands and circumstances which fall below what we would consider to be acceptable standards. But yet, they do not seem to be accorded the support and help which is needed. We thank you and pray too for people who give up so much to work in relief agencies, often leaving family and friends and life in their home country behind. People doing that as they wish to be able to do so much more but being constrained by lack of resources. As in the name of Jesus, we offer this prayer for the harvest. May it be that praise and thanks for all your goodness and for every blessing will always resound from our hearts and be shown in our lives. Amen. We now focus on another of the great harvest hymns, which reminds us that there is much for which we should thank God. The hymn, For the Fruits of All Creation, Thanks Be to God.
The second scripture lesson is two, two verses from the book of James, and it's about patience in suffering. Be patient then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop, patiently waiting for the return of autumn and spring. You too be patient and stand firm, because the Lord's coming is near. Amen. And God bless us on the understanding and activity concerning God's word. Thank you. It's quite natural for us to associate the word harvest with tangible things which are grown for later consumption, both by humans and indeed by animals. Crops such as grain, vegetables and fruit and so on. But nowadays, the word harvest also has wider connotations. We are aware that in response to calls to decrease the use of fossil fuels and to increase the supply and use of green and other forms of sustainable energy, some farmers are diversifying into growing and harvesting new and sustainable crops, such as willow, or sunflowers, or oilseed rape, all of which are used to fuel biomass boilers. And the word harvesting is also applied to the power which is naturally generated by both the winds and the waves. Turbines on hilltops harvest the power of the winds, and turbines in the sea harvest the power of the waves. And just as we have observed earlier that the cycle of growth and harvesting for some food crops is continuous, so too is the harvesting from sources of natural energy. The concept of the continuity of sowing and later reaping the harvest can be applied to various situations in ordinary life. Situations such as, if the student does not sow the seeds of disciplined study, there is little chance of reaping the harvest of successfully gaining the award for passing the course. If we do not sow the seeds of care, concern and love for other people, we may not know the joy of being enfolded in the harvest of love. And for the church, for the people of God, there is surely another dimension to the meaning of the word harvest. Jackie has kindly read two scripture passages for us, and I will now share with you a few verses from Matthew's Gospel. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and illness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. The harvest which Jesus was speaking about was, of course, the harvest of faith, to achieve which we need to engage in outreach and mission. And there are some clear similarities between that harvest and other harvests which we thought about earlier. A precondition to any kind of harvest being taken is that there has been adequate preparation. For the seed or for the bulb, the ground needs to be prepared. For the marine harvest, it is important that the natural underwater habits of the fish, habitats, sorry, of the fish are not depleted or destroyed recklessly. And for the church, yes, for the church, there are practical issues which require attention. Things like how do we organise teams, what will be the focus of our outreach, when will we do it, and so on. But fundamentally, that preparation should be founded on discipleship, which is not only learning about the teachings of Jesus, but also demonstrably living by them. And of course, it is crucially important that preparation involves prayer, seeking the guidance and leading of God and the power of his Spirit in all that we do. Then the seeds need to be planted, and we know where they are to be found. That is in the words of Scripture. 
in the stories of God's promises and his faithfulness to his people, in the teachings and in the challenges of Jesus. It wasn't that I planned it to be like this, but I'm sure that it's no coincidence that today is actually Bible Sunday, a day which celebrates how the Bible can change the lives of individuals and communities across the world. Once the seeds are planted, they need to be tended and nurtured to bring them to a harvest. In the sense of gardening or farming, we partner with God as we feed and water the ground and he makes the seed grow. In the sense of outreach and mission, we also partner with God as we try to nourish the seeds of faith by prayer and support. But we must never forget that it is the Spirit of God which works to make the seeds of faith grow and become a harvest. In many denominations of the Christian church, and most certainly in the Church of Scotland, as we look to the future, there is a very clear recognition that one of the biggest challenges before us is that of sowing the seeds, the challenge of mission. Perhaps in different places, perhaps in addition to the tried and tested ways, we also need to develop and use new ways and different techniques. But we must never forget that just as in growing crops, as God sets before us the challenge, he also sends us out as workers in his harvest field. He sends us out with a blueprint to follow of being persistent in preparation, which is discipleship. To be persistent in sowing, which is mission. To be persistent in nurturing, which is fellowship, worship and service. And then as the Apostle Paul pointed out to the Galatians, let us not grow weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. May God give us the vision, the will and the strength to be sowers of the seed and to trust in his good time that a harvest will come and that we will be sent out to work in the harvest field. Amen. Again we come to God in prayer. Let us pray. Lord of the harvest, as in your presence we have given thought to a wide definition of the term harvest as we see it in our lives, we give you thanks that we are richly blessed by every type of harvest which benefits, supports and enriches all our days. Particularly now we remember and give thanks for the people who from the earliest of our days have sown seeds of faith in our lives. Thank you that within the fellowship of the family of faith, these seeds have been nurtured and have grown. Thank you that in what Jesus Christ has done for us through his life, his death and resurrection, we have the assurance that in your time, you will bid us welcome and there will be rejoicing as the sheaves are gathered into heaven. We come before you, Lord, bringing our prayers for others, people and communities who have nothing to celebrate because their harvest is poor or non-existent, people who do not have the resources to tend their land or they're simply denied a just reward for their labours, people and communities whose harvest has been destroyed in the chaos of war or by natural disaster. We remember that within our own nation and community, there are people and families who do not have enough to eat and are dependent on the generous support of others. We pray for people who are dependent on food banks and also for the people who give of their time and energy and vision to operate and manage these valuable and necessary resources. Lord, you are generous to us. And in response, we lay before you two plates of monetary gifts, one for the regular and ongoing work of the church, and the second, which is of our harvest gifts, which will be donated to an appropriate charitable cause. We ask that these gifts on this harvest day might be blessed and used 
to bring relief and hope to others in need. We give them with all our giving today, offering what we are and what we have to be used for the work of your church and the blessing of your people. These and all our prayers we bring together in the prayer which Jesus taught his first disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever. Amen. Amen. Last week, when I asked Jackie to read the scripture lessons for us today, and we chatted about the service, Jackie commented that our closing hymn was often used in some of the old American movies. That's the way in which Jackie knew it. Although this hymn does not appear on any of our regular hymn lists, I do hope that you might know it and that you will like it. Alan played it as a voluntary before the service. So I hope also that it speaks to you. (laughs) Harvest. Our hymn is bringing in the sheaves.
That was lovely, Alan. Thank you. And I very much appreciated the way that you played that, like the, you hear it in the films. I also was very conscious that people were bursting to sing that today. I could hear a humming across it. The sooner we get back to singing hymns, the better. If you're able, please be upstanding for the blessing. The fields are all white and the reapers are few. We children are willing, but what can we do to work for the Lord in his harvest? As we go from worship, Lord, show us and lead us to what we can do for your harvest. And may we do it knowing the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and always. Amen.